Could black holes be the key to a quantum theory of gravity, a deeper theory of how reality, of how space and time works? Well, I think so. For decades, we believed that black holes were the absolute end, a place where everything, from light to time itself, vanishes from the universe forever. But then, a discovery by Stephen Hawking changed everything. He revealed that black holes actually glow. This means that, somehow, they are leaking information from the very place where all theories insisted nothing could escape. That discovery ignited one of the greatest paradoxes in modern physics, a mystery that has baffled scientists for nearly half a century. And perhaps, if we can understand what's happening inside these shadows, we will touch upon the deepest secret the universe has ever hidden how reality, space, and time truly work. In the late 18th century, the universe was explained entirely by Newton's simple laws. To him, the cosmos operated like an intricate machine, everything pulled on everything else with gravity, and nothing was beyond the reach of classical mathematics. Space-time wasn't even a concept. Light was simply the fastest thing we knew. But then, two men dared to ask a strange question. One was John Michel, an English clergyman with a passion for astronomy. The other was Pierre-Simon Laplace, a celebrated French mathematician. They wondered what would happen if a star were so massive that not even light could escape it. They called it a dark star. Using Newtonian physics, they argued that if the escape velocity the speed needed to break free from a gravitational pull exceeded the speed of light, the star would become invisible. It would still be there, shining brightly, but no one on the outside could ever see it. It was an idea far too bold for the 18th century and, strangely, astonishingly close to the truth. But they were missing a crucial piece in understanding of space itself. Michel and Laplace imagined gravity pulling light back, like a cannonball not fast enough to leave Earth. Today, we know it's not that simple. Light isn't pulled back. The very space around the object is warped so intensely that all paths lead inward. That's the difference between a clever idea and a revolution in thought. The 18th century lacked the tools to see this, but the question they left behind remained as powerful as ever if the universe can hide its own light. What kind of space are we truly living in? It would take more than a hundred years for someone to emerge with an answer. Someone who saw that gravity wasn't a force at all, but the very shape of space-time itself. In the early 20th century, the world of physics was shaken to its core. Newton's classical laws, which once explained everything from a falling apple to the motion of planets, were no longer enough to describe the universe as we began to look deeper. Light, time, and space were no longer behaving as expected. And then, in 1915, Albert Einstein published his General Theory of Relativity. For the first time, humanity understood that gravity wasn't a pulling force but the warping of space-time, according to Einstein. Matter and energy tell space-time how to curve, and in turn, curved space-time tells matter how to move. Metaphorically, space isn't a fixed stage. It's a flexible fabric upon which the universe performs. A year later, amidst the fires of World War I, the German physicist Karl Schwarzschild read Einstein's new theory. With only pen, paper, and his imagination, he began to solve Einstein's equations. And there, in a tent on the battlefield. He discovered something no one expected. Schwarzschild showed that if an object with enough mass is compressed into a small enough region, the space around it will curve to a bizarre degree. At a certain limit now called the Schwarzschild radius, every outward path, whether for light or matter, is bent back inward. Not because an invisible force is pulling things down, but because the very fabric of space itself has turned inward. Imagine placing a light bowling ball on a rubber sheet. It creates a small dent, but if you place a ball so heavy it punctures the sheet, then no matter which way you try to go, all paths slide toward that hole. For Schwarzschild. This was no longer an analogy, it was the true geometry of the universe. Schwarzschild didn't call it a black hole, but what he wrote was the first modern description of its geometry. If we were to crush the Earth down to a sphere with a radius of just over 9 millimeters, the gravity at its surface would be so strong that light could not escape. It sounds simple, 
But its true meaning is terrifying. This isn't just a heavy object, but a region where space is bent to an extreme, a place where time and space swap their roles. Michelle and Laplace were right, but only halfway. They spoke of a dark star where light was trapped. Einstein and Schwarzschild told us why not because light is pulled, but because there is no outward direction left to go. Space has folded in on itself. Yet, a huge question remained if math allows such a thing to exist. Does nature actually create it? Could a real star collapse deep enough to cross that boundary? Or was this just a mathematical curiosity that would never happen in the real world? That question would haunt physics for decades and usher in a long age of skepticism, where even Einstein himself wondered if the universe would ever permit such absurd objects to exist. The skepticism wasn't just a gut feeling of disbelief. It was rooted in how general relativity describes time near a black hole. If you stood far away and watched an object fall toward that region, you would see it slow down, its light redden and dim, until it seemed to freeze at the invisible boundary known as the event horizon. To an outside observer, the object's time appears to be frozen. Because of this, many physicists believe the collapse would never complete, that the star would remain suspended at the boundary forever, as if stuck between existence and nothingness. But the truth is more complex. If we change our perspective and imagine ourselves as the one falling in time flows perfectly normally, you would cross the event horizon in a finite amount of time and continue deeper, toward a place where the laws of physics begin to break down. There is no wall stopping you, only time and space switching roles for the outsider. The object freezes for the insider. The journey continues. This misunderstanding that the star freezes forever cast doubt on the concept of black holes for decades. Physicists at the time had reason to be skeptical even if the math allowed it. The real universe might operate differently. Perhaps natural mechanisms prevent a total collapse. Perhaps energy, magnetic fields, or quantum pressure would prop up the star before it crossed that invisible line. However, a few younger minds weren't satisfied with that comfortable conclusion. In 1939, Robert Oppenheimer and Hartland Snyder published a daring paper. They simulated the collapse of a massive star within the framework of general relativity. And the result was undeniable if the star is heavy enough. Nothing can stop it from collapsing completely. From the outside, it freezes at the event horizon. But from the inside, time continues and the star vanishes into its own shadow. Their work was the first warning that black holes might not be just elegant mathematics, but a real part of nature. But the world was on the brink of war, and these questions were temporarily set aside. It would be more than two decades before a new generation of physicists raised on the dream of space exploration would return to the idea and finally take black holes seriously. The 1960s. The world was emerging from conflict and humanity began looking to the heavens with a new ambition to conquer space. And during that same decade, the absurdities of physics began to come to life. A new generation Penrose, Hawking. Wheeler was no longer afraid to challenge nature itself. Roger Penrose was the first to open the door, using pure mathematics. He proved that when a massive star collapses, the formation of a singularity is not an accident, it's an inevitable consequence of general relativity. No need for idealized assumptions like perfect symmetry or absolute stillness. If you have enough matter, it must collapse. Nature, it seemed, didn't shy away from extremes. It created them as if to test the limits of its own physical laws, building on that foundation. Stephen Hawking took the next step, together with Penrose. He demonstrated that general relativity not only predicts the collapse of stars, but could also be applied backward. In time, the entire universe was once contained within an initial singularity, what we call the Big Bang. Black holes, in that sense, are not just the end point of matter, but also a mirror reflecting the beginning of the universe. With this, Einstein's absurdity became the centerpiece of cosmology. While theorists were coming to terms with this, astronomers began to see the first signs. Radio observatories detected strange, Brilliant sources of light quasars outshining hundreds of galaxies combined, yet coming from a tiny region in the distant cosmos. Nothing but a colossal, collapsed object could explain that power around the same time. 
a powerful X-ray source named Cygnus X-1 was discovered, a star appeared to be orbiting an invisible companion, its gas being stripped away layer by layer. All signs pointed to one conclusion. Black holes weren't just theoretical, they were really out there. But as the veil of skepticism lifted, a new layer of mystery appeared. If black holes truly exist, what is happening inside them? At the singularity where density and space-time curvature become infinite, do the laws of physics still hold? According to relativity, the singularity isn't a place in space, but a moment in time the point where time ends. If so, what lies on the other side of the end of time? That question transformed the black hole from a mathematical prediction into the greatest philosophical challenge of modern physics. It demands not only a deeper understanding of space-time, but a new theory, something that can connect the macro world of Einstein with the micro world of quantum mechanics. A theory of quantum gravity, where physics and philosophy intersect, and the line between reality and nothingness blurs. In the mid-1970s, Stephen Hawking, a man almost completely immobilized, yet whose mind roamed more freely than anyone's, proposed a hypothesis that merged Einstein's relativity with quantum mechanics. That hypothesis led to one of the most profound discoveries in modern physics. Hawking found that black holes aren't completely black. They actually glow, not with fire, but with quantum light, according to quantum mechanics. Empty space is never truly empty. Virtual pairs of particles and antiparticles constantly pop into existence and annihilate each other in an invisible dance. But if this happens right at the event horizon, one particle can fall in while the other escapes before they can disappear. This escaping particle carries away a tiny piece of the black hole's energy, and so the black hole slowly evaporates. Hawking called this phenomenon Hawking radiation. It completely changed our perception of these absolute objects. The black hole, once seen as an eternal prison, now had a life cycle. It was a beautiful and terrifying idea even the most powerful objects in the universe cannot escape time. But if a black hole can vanish, what happens to everything that fell into it? A star, a planet, or even the information about its structure, where does it all go? According to the initial calculations, Hawking radiation is completely random, carrying no trace of what fell in. If that's true, when the black hole evaporates, all information about its past is permanently lost. This is a violation of a fundamental principle in physics. In nature, information is never destroyed. If you burn a book, the information is still contained in the smoke, ash, and light. It's just scrambled, not lost, but with black holes. It seemed nature was breaking its own rules. With this, Hawking had unintentionally created a fundamental crisis, a conflict between the two pillars of physics. General relativity, which allows information to fall in and never escape. And quantum mechanics, which insists that information can never be destroyed. A flood of hypotheses emerged. Some proposed that information isn't lost but is subtly encoded on the surface of the black hole in what they call quantum hair. Each strand of hair stores a tiny bit of information, which gradually escapes with the Hawking radiation. Others went further suggesting that reality might operate on the holographic principle that all the information inside a three-dimensional volume of space can be fully described on the two-dimensional surface that encloses it. If that's true, then the universe we inhabit all the stars, galaxies, and even us could be just a projection of an information code inscribed on the edge of space-time. A cosmic mirror reflecting its own existence, the black hole, once a symbol of the end has now become the key to understanding the beginning. It is the only place in nature where the two languages of the universe, relativity and quantum mechanics, are forced to speak to each other. And perhaps, it is there that we will find what Einstein never could a unified theory of everything. There is a beautiful irony in this journey, what was once called a black hole, a place where light dies, might be the very place that reveals the deepest light of human understanding. Perhaps, when we stare into that darkness long enough, we won't just see a black hole, we'll see how the universe remembers itself. If you're excited by this journey, don't forget to like and subscribe to join us as we explore the other mysteries of the cosmos.